Um, and namaste guys, Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this uh, Tuesday evening here in Denver, Colorado. It's about 5.30 and I finished earlier by 30 minutes than I thought. So I just finished uh, several healings and the last healing, I was completely and utterly blazed out of my mind. I was so blissed out and leaving my body that I was like, what am I doing again? What am I sweeping? What am I removing? What's the protocol? I had to like keep snapping back into my body. So it took a little bit of effort. So I thought, well, at the end of several healings, there's a bit of congestion that's absorbed, right? You know, you're, you're an energy healer, so you're absorbing disease, congestive stress energies, not on purpose, but it's just kind of a byproduct of the profession. You know, you spray your healing crystal, you spray your hands, you throw the disease energy into a salt bowl. Yana, namaste. But there's still a level of congestion. So one of the best things that you can do to release disease congested energies from your energy body, especially your etheric body, is exercising. So I thought, hey, let's jump on. Let's do a quick stream. We're going to exercise right here. This was a gift given to me this uh, past Christmas by a friend of mine, her and her mom, and said, hey, you wanted this for Christmas because you don't like going to the gym? I was, I was, I don't want to say a gym rat, that's not accurate, but I remember struggling and fussing and fighting to go to the gym two days a week, maybe four years ago, and then I started going to the gym three days a week, and then I started going to the gym five days a week, and it started to become a pretty intense habit. But I realized, you know what? This is what I'm looking for right now. For those of you who followed a previous stream that I did, I had the objective or goal to put on 20 pounds of lean body mass, and I thought I was going to do it in eight weeks. <laughs> I ended up doing it in 14 months, a little bit different than eight weeks, and I did the best that I could. I just was not eating enough. But now, starting 2020, my focus has not been on gaining weight. My focus has been on reducing weight. So... Um, <laughs> I have one more pound to go. My body is 157 right now. I have one more pound to go to be 156, and that will be the smallest, lowest. John, I'm gonna say smallest or lowest weight that I've been at in years. I can't even remember the last time I've been 156 pounds. And it was interesting because from the age of about 15 years old to maybe the age of 30. So 15 years of my life, my body weight didn't fluctuate really at all until my late 20s. <clears throat> it changed. But um, so I thought, hey, we're always talking about energy healing, meditation, and practical spirituality. Well, physical exercise is very, very important for the spiritual path because the stronger your physical body is, the higher you can go up in your spiritual practice. If your physical body is very sick, right? It's sick, it's depleted, it's exhausted. It's going to be very difficult for you to sit down and do higher level spiritual practices. Now, in general, connecting it to strength training, you want to do your strength training before you do your spiritual practice. In general, strength training before you do your spiritual practice. Why? Because your spiritual practice opens up and expands the nadis or the energy channels within your body. Physical exercise contracts those channels so it can be too big of a jump from from having super big open channels and then you start doing strength training and then you're forcing those channels to close very very quickly right so it's best to do your strength training before you do your spiritual practice but in this case i did my spiritual practice earlier today did a bunch of healings which is releasing and using up some of that spiritual energy right now as I do the physical exercise, which is not super intensive strength training, the physical exercise that I'm going to be doing is going to be cleansing and purifying the disease energies within my etheric, uh, my etheric body. My, the, basically, the blueprint of my physical body is called your etheric body. So you have etheric eyeballs, etheric mouth, etheric organs, etheric skin. And the etheric body, for most people, is about two to four inches out. It interpenetrates the physical body and extends two to four inches out and it is a blueprint for your physical body. So if you change the blueprint, you change your physical body. Aha, fascinating, isn't it? 
So what are our exercises gonna be? We're gonna do some chin-ups, three sets. We're gonna do some dips, three sets. We're gonna do some ab crunches, three sets. And then we're gonna do some uh, push-ups, three sets. I'll move it when we get to that point. And then we're gonna do 35 to 40 um, kick squats, which are super intense. They don't look intense, but they are intense. So let me move this a little bit closer and let's begin. So if you have one of these things, pick it up on Amazon. It's a great deal, um, 150 bucks roughly, but it gives you all the necessary equipment you need in order to keep your physical body healthy and strong at your house without having to spend the time or the money going to the gym. Make sense? Also a good friend of mine, Fernando, inspired me because he got one of his own maybe a year ago. I think so, about a year ago. No, maybe even more than a year ago. Anyways, I know he's using it. So let's begin. Yeah. So when you have an underhand grip, you're working more of your biceps, right? If you have an overhand grip, you're more of working the upper back. Just a little FYI. So if you wanna work your biceps more, underhand grip. You wanna work your back more, overhand grip. And feel free to throw out some questions. Let's spice it up, let's keep it interesting. Ted, Atma Namaste, good to have you on as always. Welcome to our workout session uh, with, uh... <sighs> yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. And I usually break about 30 seconds in between sets. That's nice. Water. Look, Colorado. Do you guys see it normally or do you see it backwards? Because I know the camera's switched. <clears throat> but basically, this routine I do it about five to seven times per week because it's not a huge taxing on my body. I don't really get sore the next day, but it keeps my body, my muscular endurance up. Does that make sense? <clears throat> And this is a good piece of equipment because it doesn't move a lot. Do you know what I mean? There's certain um, pull-up bars that wiggle and wobble and aren't very sturdy. This is pretty good. Um, I think the maximum weight limit is 320, 320 pounds on this. You can get the chin-up bars that you put in the door frame, but I've seen too many accidents, too many people trip, fall, hurt themselves, not worth it. So now we just did our chin-ups, three sets. Now we're gonna do three sets of uh, dips. One of my favorites. So I remember growing up in Massachusetts, I have two older brothers that are 10 and 11 years older than me. 
And of course, you're a teenager and your hormones are getting jacked up and you're excited and you're aggressive and you got a lot of energy. And then you have two older brothers that you've been idolizing since you were a little kid. And so when you're old enough to start working out with them, it's like the greatest thrill ever. So I remember going down stairs where we had our, um, our like home gym and I remember watching my brother train and then I would sneak in and train with him and you know we would do a lot of tricep exercises, a lot of bicep exercises. My, my uh, family very focused on the upper body, not so focused on the lower body. Little chicken legs and big like broad shoulders and big chests. I think my brother my brother Garrett's maximum bench press was like 405 at what, 6'1", 205 pounds, or 220 pounds, it's not bad. But exercising the arms as an energy healer is super important because we heal a lot. So as we're healing people, sometimes we're absorbing those energies into our, into our hands, our palms, into our wrists, into our elbows, into our shoulders. So when you work, when you flex the joints, if I move my armpit, if I move my elbow, if I move my wrist, I move my hand, it's releasing the disease congested stress energy from those areas. So it's moving the lymphatic system. Super, super important. Same thing with massage therapists. So you can either work out your upper body to help remove the disease congested energy or you can take sea salt or table salt, wet your arm, take the salt, and scrub from your wrist. You can scrub your hands from your wrist, down your forearm, your elbow, down your biceps, and under your um, armpit to cleanse any disease congested energy in the arm. Super important. Again, if you're a healer, a massage therapist, or somebody that uses their arms in their profession, which, I mean, a lot of us use our arms in our professions, but specifically use our arms. All right, one more set. I'm a namaste. Welcome to the workout party. Let's see, for you guys, 12 hours, 6, six. so it's midnight? Is it midnight on Wednesday? So midnight Thursday morning then, I'm guessing, right? <sighs> Woof. Man. All right, so we did two exercises. Underhand pull-ups, dips, so biceps and triceps. Now we're gonna do um, leg raises. Work out the abs. Oh, I can't remember the last time I filmed myself working out. I could take a guess of when it was four years ago, maybe, maybe even longer. Yeah.
good reminder when doing those movements, which is actually interesting because I was like, either I'm the only one who hasn't heard this or everyone else is not doing it too. But before you do any kind of ab exercise, crunch your abdominal muscles tightly, compact them, then do the movement versus as you're doing the movement and you're contracting, you wanna be contracted before you do the movement, hold that contraction for the entire set of exercises. Little tip, I wasn't doing it, maybe you weren't doing it or aren't doing it, and that can help you. Set number two. More than halfway done, kind of. I think we're about halfway done. Also, whew, don't be shy. Throw out some questions, comments. <sighs> Wishing you were working out right here. Kate, I'm a namaste, good to have you back on as always. <sighs> Your profile picture looks like someone's holding a red sled or the end of a Christmas tree or something. <sighs> so again, 30 to 45 seconds in between sets. Again, this whole series takes about 20 to 25 minutes. So it's fast, it's effective, not a lot of drive time to and from the gym not having to wait on equipment. Again, these are body weight exercises, so this is more calisthenics than quote unquote strength training or powerlifting. Felicia, I'm a namaste, welcome girl. So now we're going to move on to um, move on to what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Push-ups. So I'm thinking maybe here is that a good spot? Yeah, that looks like a good spot. We're trying new things today. We're experimenting. Okay, so now, push-ups. So again, we do three sets of all the exercises. So three sets of underhand pull-ups, three sets of dips, three sets of leg raises, ab crunches, three sets of push-ups, and then 35 to 40 reps of one-legged squats. My favorite. Oh, usually I have music. I have my headphones on and playing music, working out. I remember I used to be very adverse to playing music while working out because instead of listening to my body and then going with the tempo of my body, I would be going with the tempo of the beat of the music. 
So I wasn't listening as much and being as aware if I was listening to music. Does that make sense? Okay, second set. I remember back in the day when my middle brother who was in the Marine Corps, they talked about doing pyramiding with the uh, Prashana. I'm gonna say they talked about doing pyramiding with push-ups. So pyramiding is where you start at a number and you count backwards from that number and then you do it again with one less rep counting backwards. So you start with say 10. So you do 10 push-ups, then you would do nine push-ups, then you do eight push-ups, then you do seven, six, five, four, three, all the way down to one push-up. So a pyramid of 10 is a lot of push-ups. I think it's over a hundred. So my brother would do a pyramid of a hundred push-ups when he was in the Marine Corps, which is over a thousand push-ups in, in one, um, one set time period. It's pretty amazing. All right, last set. That's nice. Okay. So now I'm gonna put your, you guys over here. I think you can see it better here, all right? Something like that. Christian, it's all wobbly. What's going on? So now the last exercise we're gonna do is called one-legged squats. As I understand it, my teacher, Grandmaster Chol Koksui, the modern founder of Pranic Healing and Rahatic Yoga, his spiritual practice every day was four hours long at his level of practice. So four hours of practice at my level and four hours of practice at his level, it's a pretty big gap. And people might be saying four hours of meditation and spiritual work and all that stuff, I couldn't do that. Well, what if that four hours transformed every aspect of your life? It gave you bliss, it gave you peace, it gave you clarity, it gave you inner strength, it gave you wisdom. Would that four hours every day be worth it to you versus living a life of fogginess and chaos and drama and um, anxiousness and anger, right? So the one-legged squats, Grandmaster Cho Kuksui would do 108 of them after his spiritual practice as a way of grounding the energies for himself. So we just did a full day of healing. So we're doing our physical exercises to release congestion. Then we're doing squats, one-legged squats, to further ground and anchor the energy. So we'll do about 35, 36. Ah, you can see me perfect. Yeah! Woo! That's nice. It's a lot harder than it looks. So that 
is the completion of our 20, 25 minute workout. There are no windows here. How are you clean the energy you're expelling? Mantra, incense. Good question. So we have a fan. I use incense and every other day, no matter how cold it is, I'll crack or open all the windows in the apartment and let any diseased congested energies out. Also, in the main living area, the mantras are usually being played for hours a day. So that's where I meditate, that's where I do my healings. So I like to have that place really, really clean. In general, bed's pretty clean. Um, that wasn't always the case. If you have a hard time sleeping, one factor is your bed is energetically congested. So you're trying to sleep and be still and smoothly, quietly, gently transition into the inner world, but because you have a lot of thoughts, feelings, and congestion in your sleeping environment, it makes it more difficult to transition into the inner world. So if you need help with that, let me know. And if you need help with energy healing. Now, here's the question. Christian, why would I hire you for coaching? Or why would I hire you for energy healing? You're not. Nobody gets coaching just to get coaching. Nobody gets healing just to get healing. People get coached and people get healed for something specific. So you should, with your services, be paying for something specific. I have stress in my life. I'm paying to have that stress taken away. I have lack of clarity in my life. I'm paying to have clarity and insight. I have money problems and financial hardships. I'm paying to have that part of my life healed. So you're not paying for coaching and you're not paying for healing. You're investing in a specific transformation you want to experience and embody in your life. Remember, you're not investing in the coach or the healer or the mentor, you're investing in yourself 100% of the time. So if I can help you with your process of transforming your life, go to christianrlong.com, it's my website, it's my name, super easy, and sign up for a distant pranic healing session. Let's get at it, let's make a miracle happen. Let's produce the result that you're seeking in your life. And that's it. So guys, thank you very much for joining me in this workout. I inspire you to pick up one of these bad babies over on um, Amazon. If you have a hard time going to the gym, scheduling the time to go to the, to go to the gym, if it's right there in your house or your apartment, you can easily bust it out and make it happen. And some people might be saying, well, I buy equipment, I buy a treadmill, and I don't use it. I buy a stationary bike and I, I don't use it. I buy a home gym or a chin-up bar and I don't use it. Well, then guess you need healing around that. I use this thing almost every single day because it's part of my practice. It's part of keeping my body healthy. It's part of my mission and my purpose and my dharma. I can't forget about it because it's part of my body, right? My body is part of my everything. So I gotta take care of it and I use this equipment to take care of my body. So if you have equipment that's designed to take care of your body and you're not using that equipment, then hire me for healing and we'll get you using that equipment. And that's it. So guys, thank you very much for sharing your time, your energy, your comments, your questions, your clarifications, your engagement. Super, super excited and I look forward to connecting with you very, very soon. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, catching his breath. Hope you have a beautiful week. Um, a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma, namaste. Bye-bye.